Hello everyone, today I am going to be reviewing the new album by Swedish alternative electronic artist Jona Lee, who was formerly of course known as I Am Am I Who Am I. This is actually her seventh full album that she's released in her career, because um, she actually released like one or two records as a you know, self-titled artist before she dived into the I Am project. And then she released three albums through that, and then just 15 or 16 months ago, in 2018, released her first album under her new moniker, Yona Lee, uh, Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten, which was an amazing 16-song record that, while it was rolling out, I actually discovered her music from. It was my entry point in a lot of ways to Yona's music. I since then reviewed her three I Am projects, Bounty, Kin, and Blue on this channel. And here we are, just as I said, about 15 or 16 months later, with a new record called Remember the Future. <sighs> so uh, when she was doing Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten, there was this campaign on Kickstarter for the, uh, the album tour to be funded. Uh, she left it for like a good 15, 30, I think it was like a 30 day funding period campaign. And uh, the entire baseline uh, goal was reached in f only five days. And so there were all these stretch goals. She kept adding more and more cities because it really, I mean, it didn't go to the absolute uh, highest it could possibly go, but she made so much uh, money from crowdfunding from uh, the Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten tour, which I actually got to go to in uh, New York this last August. I went to one of her shows. She was actually in New York actually like a month ago, which I thought was a really kind of quick turnaround for her um, because it was only the, it was like only six months before that that she was in Brooklyn. And uh, it was an amazing show. And uh, I have um, I actually uploaded clips of it to uh, this channel. By the way, to anyone who might be wondering, just as a little disclaimer, I did change my YouTube channel name. Uh, it was about time, and I was so relieved to find out that it was actually really easy to do. I don't know why, but I feel like years and years ago, before I even started uploading like these reviews on this channel, I tried to change my YouTube username, I think, and I had a lot of trouble uh, with Google letting me actually do that. But maybe it was more because I was trying to change my email. And that was being really difficult. And it was basically, I had to create a whole new email. And I was really worried that I was not gonna be able to change my YouTube username, but I luckily was able to. It's now Lonely Leaf. Uh, I need anonymity, I'm afraid, uh, just professionally. Um, I d it just, it's just how it has to be. It makes me feel a lot more comfortable about continuing to do this because I really do love doing this. But I wanna make sure that like my uh, career and everything doesn't like intertwine with this too much. Um, so that's why the, the channel name has changed. Um, it's still me and I'm still going to keep going uh, as I have been for the most part. You know, I'm trying to think of new things I could do for this channel, but I'm also like trying to find the time. So we'll see how this channel evolves over time. But for now, it's still mostly music reviews. Back, back to the album at hand. Anyway, so one of the stretch goals was a new album to be released in the summer of 2019. And uh, I didn't, I knew of that in the back of my head, but when this album was announced back in February, I was really floored at a quick turnaround. Yona has traditionally taken a good three to almost four years between projects. And mainly uh, due to the fact that she would film a music video for every single song. They were visual projects. Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten was the first record where besides her earlier stuff, you know, that I haven't listened to, I'm sorry. Um, it's very different, you know, from the I Am projects. Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten had a film. However, it was unique in that it covered most of the songs on the record, but it didn't include all of them. So it was the first record to not have a video for every single song, which is understandable because the album had 16 songs on it. It was a longer album. Uh, here we have only 11 songs, but given the quick turnaround, I'm surprised that as of today, we already have three music videos for this album. I'm not sure if she intends to make any more. I had heard she had said in an interview that she was kind of just planning a little trilogy of videos. And for Open Sea, Somebody, and Now Remember the Future, the videos all connect and they do form a nice little trilogy. So I'm actually completely content with the visuals she has given us considering the quick turnaround. And I don't expect any more. Um, I don't think the album necessarily needs it. It speaks for itself. Now, I loved Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten. That album was very anthemic. It was very bombastic. It was, uh, it was extremely high energy. Um, and it was very experimental. 
Um, but at the same time, it saw her also trying to kind of come into the 20, what that time was 2018 pop scene as sort of this female figurehead uh, in alternative Scandi pop music and really make a mark on it. Whereas the I Am projects felt a little bit more anonymous, like it didn't quite feel so much like she was just directly telling us things about her life. It felt very much, it was like all cloaked in metaphor. It was all cloaked in this art piece that was very kind of inaccessible in places. Um, although gradually I felt like she drew the curtains back through those three projects. Um, Everyone Afraid to be Forgotten felt brutally honest and it felt like it was touching on subjects I hadn't necessarily heard her touch on before. Although remember it was the first album I heard of hers. Now looking back, I can see the progression. Remember the Future is actually quite different from Everyone Afraid to be Forgotten. And I suppose that maybe I should have been preparing myself more for that when I uh, was going into this record, because even hearing the lead singles that had been released ahead of time, which were the songs I just mentioned, Open Sea, which was the first single, Somebody, which was released last month, which I have reviewed separately on this channel as well, and then Remember the Future, which was just released last week, all three of those singles really perked my ears up and had me very excited, particularly Somebody and Remember the Future. But after hearing the whole record, if anyone follows me on Twitter, you may have uh, heard some concerning news from me, which was really sad for me at first. Basically me saying, I'm not exactly upon first listen, very important to mention, first listen, feeling this album to the same level as everybody, af everyone afraid to be forgotten. I have to remember that when I first ever watched the uh, Bounty visuals or the Kin visuals or the Blue album, the first time I watched those, particularly Bounty and Kin, it wasn't exactly a love at first sight. I mean, I was intrigued and I wanted to keep listening and I wanted to know more, but I have to remember that Yona's music is very experimental and it is very avant-garde um, and it is not, it's similar to Bjork in that way, it is not easily digestible. Um, you really need to let it sit for quite some time. Um, one to two listens ain't gonna cut it. You need to listen to it a lot to get used to and accustomed to the untraditional melodies, the untraditional layering, the um, especially considering, I mean, I will admit I'm not the most alternative music fan. I mean, I love alternative. I love the whole thing about it. But if you look at my channel, you know, I review Katy Perry. I review Lady Gaga. Like I review a lot of pop and like somewhat accessible stuff. And I can't help it. I just, I really like accessible, good melodies. And so sometimes I have to really try and put like a lot of like, I love this song. I really appreciate it. It's just not something I really feel like I can listen to that often. And I do feel as though there are some Yona songs that fall into that category. You know, if I went to rank Yona songs, there are several songs I'm not that crazy about, but there's almost no song that I don't quite get why it was made. I feel like every song is special and kind of sacred because of its meaning. And um, I have to remember that, you know, it's just not always to my taste or to my liking sonically. So on first listen, I must admit, I was a little bit disappointed, but I think I just, like I said, the turnaround between projects was so quick that I still was very much kind of thinking of Yona as the artist that was making music that sounded very much like Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten. And I was expecting another Dunes of Sand. I was expecting another work or another joy or another Samaritan. And um, I, you know, if, if you're going into this project expecting that, you are going to be disappointed. This project, I think subtlety is the word to best describe it. Um, subtle. It is a very subtle and kind of um, nuanced record in that Everyone Afraid to be Forgotten was very loud and it was very almost caustic. I mean, it was very like on fire and she describes it as very earthy and I can hear that as well. There was a lot going on. It was, it was quite a trip and um, it kind of reminds me of Florence's Ceremonials record because it was so intense that you almost feel exhausted listening to all 16 songs. You know, it's like this is almost too much to take in one sitting. You kind of need to divide it in half. Well, this album's completely different. This album might leave you sort of wanting a little bit more, but when you really take the time, especially, you know, in a sort of more like calming, like bath or, you know, if you're in like a meditative space and you're not like necessarily like out running, because I made the mistake of like, I tend to like listen to a lot of music for the first time outside and I, or I'm like sitting and I'm kind of like, 
I'm in a bit of a busier mood. I wasn't exactly like the most relaxed. Some of these songs just were very kind of uh, off-putting at first because it is kind of slow. It's a slow burning record. Some of the songs are quite lengthy. So just because there's 11 songs doesn't mean it's not close to an hour. It's 50 minutes. And um, it is still somewhat varied. Um, but I would say that the record in, as, as a whole is something that you really need to sit with in a more sort of contemplative and subtler state of mind. You need to be a little bit more relaxed. Uh, so it's good for the bath. I will say that. And now I have finally enjoyed it that way. And I can say, and that's why I wanted to make sure I waited a little bit. I didn't want to jump prematurely into this review. I can say that I definitely actually think this album stands on its own two feet as a really strong project, considering the turnaround for it. It does feel a little bit more like a B-side project to everyone afraid to be forgotten. Like that feels like the record that is like the big showstopper. And this feels like the record she wanted to make that had all the unreleased stuff. Um, it does feel a little bit more like a B-side record, but you know how I love B-sides. There can be some really good stuff going on. So just because it kind of comes across that way doesn't mean that it isn't still something cohesively bounding the record together because it is very cohesive. Uh, it feels like a record that needed to be made, um, although it took me a minute to sort of really, like I said, a few listens to really believe that. And uh, let's talk about the songs track by track. Now, I've already talked about the lead single, Open Sea, in a video for when I, the single came out. I'm not going to go too much into it. I will say that Open Sea is one of the more anthemic songs, um, and it's one of the more memorable ones because it was a single, and because it has a bit of a more memorable chorus and structure that fans of Yona's earlier work, particularly her Blue album, will find quite familiar, except it definitely takes you to a more galactic-sounding soundscape. Uh, there's this sonar pulse that is sort of riddled throughout it. I think the song sort of picks up and gets stronger towards the end when there's sort of a little bit more of an electronic uh, meat to it. I feel like at the beginning it's trying to find its footing and melodically it might not be quite as strong, but the song actually works in its kind of odd complexity. Um, and it definitely is a throwback song to many ways to, to tease this new record well, uh, to let us know the theming is going to be a little bit more galactic in outer space because it is, this is a more ambient record. This is definitely a floatier record. I know that's a weird adjective, but I'm not so good at coming up with these great adjectives off the spot. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> floaty. That's this album. The second track is called Wipe It Off. Much like the sort of, uh, slightly, I don't want to say cumbersome title that this song has. Uh, I think it's brilliant, but it's a very Yona Lee song. And if you listen to the lyrics, it's very Yona. Um, it's it's very oddly direct, and uh, the lyrics are uh, are quite center stage on this song because of the way the sounds are built around it. They're very much to support the lyrics. There isn't as strong of a melody for this song, but you know what? That doesn't mean that it's not interesting to me. I find this a very experimental... I find this song to be a very interesting abstract construction on its own front. I feel it now, I feel it now, like the meds are wearing off, like it hasn't stopped bleeding and you're taking the band-aids off. The secret's out, the secret's out, and it's doing its broad walk. I thought it was boardwalk, but broad walk. Never heard that word before. Some sick and twisted beat. I thought it was being. Again, reading genius lyrics, it's like, oh, okay. Could maybe stop their talking. That makes more sense. Some sick and twisted beat could make them be quiet, right? So wipe it off. I needed that, like just a scratch on the arm and you didn't notice a thing till you saw that there was blood. The thing is now, it's not that deep of a cut. Use your sleeve and just wipe it off. I should mention that uh, this record was uh, largely produced by Barbell or, uh, or Clay Bjorklund. Um, and there are, uh, there are some other collaborations, which are unique I'll talk about later on. Yona's vocals are uh, very stylized, particularly on this track, and they're not for everyone. So again, it's not a song that everyone is going to find easily digestible. It's a, it's a song meant to intrigue and to make you ponder. Uh, it's got some um, kind of heavier synth work going on. Um, and uh, it's a departure in many ways from uh, Everyone Afraid to be Forgotten and that it is trying to completely, again, escape the structures of a pop song. I do feel like on that record, she was really trying to keep her experimental twisted style, but try and blend better into a more mainstream artifice. 
And the uh, Blue Album was also doing that as well. There's a big tie between the sort of sonic um, accessibility of a lot of those songs. Um, Blue being quite probably her poppiest record. I mean, Blue was all about hook and all about these anthemic choruses and all about, you know, having that catchy refrain and, and all of that. So uh, this song is definitely a departure and it does feel a lot like one because all of the, um, the sonic elements, if anyone's familiar with uh, Future Sound of London, um, I need to review some of their work on this channel. They're a uh, alternative electronic indie group um, from the UK who make very experimental electronic music. Not all of it's for my taste, uh, but there's some um, electronic work that reminds me a lot of uh, those rec those projects. Also, Amethystium comes to mind occasionally in a few in a few places. I've talked about Amethystium on this channel, who you should be paying attention to. But uh, thematically, I think you know. I actually, think this song is quite uh, easy to read. Uh, it's clearly about, at least as how I'm interpreting it. I, I think this song is clearly about like taking negative uh, feedback and just sort of brushing it off your shoulder. Uh, and, and that can, you know, mean from anything in life. Um, and it also has a bit of a sobering quality, you know, the morning after um, the, uh, the colder reality sets in and you realize you have to, you have to uh, fix some things that you might have done the previous night, <laughs> um, or you have to face um, some demons that you'd rather not. Um, but it's actually pretty easy. You just wipe it off. So somebody is, I say it like that because it's not contracted to be one word. It's somebody. It's not somebody, um, which I think is interesting. And I think a very distinct choice that she made on Yona's part. I would say that sonically, this is probably, this is my favorite song on the record. Like, I, I, I can't really um, mince words about that. I can't overstate just how groovy and uh, psychedelic and oddly uplifting this song is, um, because it's every flavor of what I love about Yona and her avant-garde production. Um, it's pop. And there's that undertone, because especially in the chorus, it's actually quite accessible. Um, and I love that. But at the same time, it's got all of these trappings around it that just cloud it in enigma. It, it, it's a very well-packaged song, and it delivers on everything that I was really looking for. And again, I think the fact that it was released ahead of the album maybe got my hopes up a little too high in that I thought every single song was going to sort of mirror that. Like, I thought that the choruses were all going to be these great payoffs that just you really want to sing along to, that stick in your head, that just sound so good. Um, and then the verses and everything, there's going to be like those ambience. And then it would have, you know, the enigmatic ambient interludes and outros, and then the spacey sort of mystical production. Um, and although we get that in every song, we don't quite get a song that I think is as polished or as well thought of as a package to be pop, but her own version of pop as this song. So this song really does kind of steal the show for me, I am afraid to say. And it's great that there's a song I really love. It was just hard on my first listen because all, very few songs kind of rose to the same level of uh, excitement for me on first listen. But again, it was kind of my headspace when I was listening to the record that I think was hindering that connection. And again, I've already talked about like the meaning about this song, very rich in a uh, story, very rich in sort of painting this picture that is quite uh, dire. And um, the theming of this record is a lot about dystopia and um, the dystopian future. She talks about how um, in the 60s, for example, the space age was, you know, looking into the future in this very optimistic and exciting way where the future felt like endless possibility and space exploration and technology and all of these things were just so new and so exciting and fresh and like really inspiring. Um, and if you contrast that with the way we look at the future today, it doesn't quite feel the same way. We look at a planet that seems to be dying because of climate change. We look at, you know, political uh, precariousness around the world and the fear of another world war. We look at, you know, lack of resources as a growing, growing population. So um, this record is trying to instill hope in uh, looking towards the future. 
Um, but remembering, you know, the ways that the mistakes that have been made in the past and, and soberly kind of looking towards the future um, with a clear conscience and a clear head and a perspective that's fresh uh, to, to really be more optimistic. And I think we really need that. And I certainly do, considering, you know, where I'm at in my life and uh, my insecurity about my feeling of uh, fear uh, looking forward. The future kind of feels like a um, relentless negative force that's constantly beating against me, but I have to be thrown at it every day because I am in the future now, you know, like I am in that future that I was terrified of when I was five, six, even 10 years younger. And um, it's really real. Like, you know, it's like, this is adulthood. This is like pure, like responsibility and maturity and, and taking control of your destiny. Like the responsibility is insane. Um, so it's, it's overwhelming and the future is overwhelming. Um, and I think that she touches that more on a uh, sort of negative note for this song, because this song is sort of like that cautious optimism. Um, we remember the good times. And in the sonics, I like how it transitions from very hopeful and optimistic in the chorus to sort of uh, darker and more uh, minor key in the uh, instrumentals for the, um, the verses, because it's this duality of sort of uh, unbridled optimism and restrained caution. <laughs> that I think is mixed well together in the sonics of this track and in the lyrics. The next track is called Matters, and this is a song that features an artist named Zola Jesus. I'm not sure if that's her real name. Apparently, she just sort of slid into Yona's DMs on Instagram, and that's how the two initially met and ended up collaborating together, which I think is a very 2019 thing to have happen. Um, this project feels very DIY in that regard, in that it's, she had no strict plan of who she was going to collaborate with. It was sort of, it was a crowdfunded album in a lot of ways. So it was like asking for people to just input their own art and collaborate with her um, and make these kind of unpredictable outcomes. She had no real idea of what this project was going to be. And you can hear that for sure. And I think that is something that I definitely got when I heard the full rec full length record. I was like, yeah, this is something completely unpredictable. This feels like a project that did feel a little bit like put together last minute to try and make a project. But again, I'm not trying to be negative by saying that. I'm just saying it's different from Everyone Afraid to be Forgotten, which really did feel like a pop record that was trying to be made. Matters is the most spaced out and psychedelic song on this record in terms of uh, lyrics, in terms of everything about the production. Um, there isn't really any beat structure whatsoever. Um, it's a extremely um, open song and it feels almost, almost a little hollow because of it. But I think the emphasis was really on the weight of the lyrics. If you read the lyrics, um, I can't help but just sort of swallowed up in the abstract poetic lyricism, um, because this is definitely the most metaphor rich, the most uh, dense, opaque lyricism, I think, on this record. And it only gets denser as the song progresses. I mean, the song ends on these lyrics um, that are very, very much in the forefront saying, scarify, fade to gray from catching time. Simple says, born hung to dry, so low. That feels like a uh, an abstract haiku that was made in a creative writing class um, that was meant to sound really good, but not make any sense. Um, just because of the artistic, you know, license that was taken with the word choices and everything. I don't know if maybe I'm just not in the right headspace right now, but my brain is not able to compute the meaning behind some of these phrases in this song. But the first, the first stanza, the first verse is the most accessible. The thin blue line bends across the fatal sky, like my back for you, crushed little fly, bend the light of hope. The end is nigh, Rise, it, rising is a changing time. Drops will hit the soil, our bells will chime. Feed my hungry jaws. And the chorus, which is a duet between Yona and Zola, we matter. Raise our voices, hum until their walls shatter. Oh, we gather. Endless winter leaves us, after all, forever. Again, it devolves a little bit in terms of sentence structure and in cohesion. Um, I have nothing bad to say about the lyrics. I think they are 
purposely meant to almost deflect a little bit. The uh, You don't exactly want to know too uh, openly and too obviously what the meaning is necessarily about. You think you know what the song's about. Well, think again, because we're going to really make you dig. Um, and as much as I could make this video like two hours long trying to dissect every single line, and I really want to, I have to, uh, I have to make sure this video stays under an hour. Um, but I will say that if I had to summarize the leaning of this song, I think I get an idea of unity uh, against uh, adversity. It's much, you know, better that we're stronger together. Um, again, looking towards the future, the horizon is a theme in this record. Um, and seeing the new sunrise and sunset, um, that's always kind of symbolizing the future and hope. But this song is definitely also very apocalyptic. Um, you know, saying the end is nigh is not something that you can just skirt around. You know, it stands out. It really does. And you're going to remember that lyric and it's going to cast a uh, shade over everything else in the song. So I do think that this song, it comes across a little bit like a dire apocalyptic warning of some sort of event that we're going to need to unify to fight against. Um, so it kind of is like a call to arms to say, we matter, we can change matter, we can make the universe and this planet a better place. Um, because right now it's crushing us um, <laughs> and uh, we need to chime our bells. You know, I'm trying to construct something here. I'd really like to know in the comments because I can't spend forever in this video talking about it. Let me know in the comments your interpretations, particularly of this song, because I'm really interested to hear everyone's insights. So uh, the next track is a pure ambient track uh, with no lyrics called Islander. Now this was a song that I think she had actually been teasing a while ago. Um, in shows. And I can't remember, she might have teased it while I was actually at the Brooklyn show. Um, I don't remember what it sounded like because I didn't take a video of it. So I can't exactly say for sure. But this title had been floating around for a while. Uh, I think that this song um, is pure brilliance. It's pure genius. I always love ambient instrumental electronic tracks because I really do think they open up a portal into just another kind of uh, imaginary world or landscape. And they paint such a beautiful picture where I feel like lyrics are almost too heavy handed. Um, you know, uh, all we need is that title. And even then I don't want it explained too much um, because honestly, it's so abstract. It's so, it's so much about a frequency and it's so much about just the sonics and trying not too hard to overanalyze and, and to make it too literal. Um, this song invites you very like mysteriously, and if you do want to consider the literal islander analogy, it does feel a little bit like you are approaching a misty island, and uh, the denizens of it are slowly inviting you and revealing themselves, and then it gets more uh, upbeat, and there's that beat that comes in, which uh, at first might be a little off-putting because it doesn't really fit with the ethereal synth work, but it does fit ultimately with... Um, the sort of crescendo and decrescendo of this track. You you sort of dance on the island and you get all uh, energized. Um, and then it uh, it adds some sort of xylophone sounding, um, uh, which reminds me of Vespertine from Yerk, um, sounding um, uh, mini beats, which are extremely satisfying to listen to. Um, this whole song is very satisfying. It's just a it's just a wonderful ethereal portal. And like that's no, there's no real other way to describe it um, that captures imagination that you know is 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 so visual without having to actually present any visuals, if that makes any sense, um, and not be literal. And it's important that it isn't. Um, so purely abstract, brilliant, genius production, gorgeous layering. And I think this was a song that she almost completely uh concocted herself i don't see any other like i don't know if clace had any hand in this track um it seems like it was just completely her creation one of the highlights for sure on this record and it was one of the songs that stood out the first time i listened to it so we have the title song remember the future after islander and especially after matters this the album does feel a little sleepy and so i must admit remember the future when it kicks in with that first verse really kind of wakes you up. It kind of makes you straighten your back. 
remember the thirst. Oh yes, Yona, I will remember the thirst. You know, it just, it just pulls you in more, I think. And you need that. A more accessible song that um, reminds me so much of Chasing Kites off of her Blue record. This song sonically in the synth production, it feels very blue. It could have fit easily on that record. Um, and I have nothing bad to say about the Sonics just because it is a beautiful, uplifting electro synth pop song um, with a great chorus. Lyrics that are a little bit more accessible, which I think actually help make the song a little bit more um, impactful. Um, she needs to sort of tell you exactly what she means with songs like this, because otherwise you wouldn't feel so uplifted um, because the sonics of it is just so uplifting. Remember the thirst, the hunger for more. Remember the future, the simple hope. Remember the dream, always rising. Remember the future, true and pure. This is not the ending. This is the thesis statement of the entire record. This is the real meat of what she's trying to make this record to convey. Uh, this is a call to unify and a call to remember what hope really is about and why we continue this dance of life uh, and why we continue to hope and create a better world for tomorrow. Um, there are endless possibilities and it can feel very overwhelming. And I feel like this song is diving into that because it gets very, the song feels very, um, towards the end, celebratory. Um, and it feels as though it is trying to harness the energy of a thousand possibilities, a million possibilities, and just throw it at you in some magical shower. Um, moving forth without a reason, find another kind of truth. Try expanding the horizon with our heads into the blue. Floating freely, use no pressure here beyond this frequency. And my skin burns from the fire as it flares inside of me. I, I push myself, I elevate myself to a higher level to find what real hope is. That flame is always burning that we tend to neglect or douse with waters of doubt. Um, that instead of just moving forth without a reason, we find our truth and we cling to that to sail into the unknown with a head held high. And so this song is definitely just carrying that message through. It takes it home for me. Outer space, um, galactic voyaging. Um, it's all of this kind of tied up in a beautiful synth pop track. And it's one of the best songs on this record. So again, it had me a little bit almost too excited for this album because the rest of the album doesn't necessarily follow suit in terms of the Sonics. But it is still a, a welcome, you know, a midsection, I would say, um, because it does sort of pick things up a bit. Uh, the next song, Crystal, featuring, I believe she's Swedish, an artist named Jenny Abramson. I must admit, I actually don't really distinguish her vocals from Yona's very much because they have a very similar kind of higher shrill vocal and then the production on it kind of distorts it. Um, it's a longer track and it's actually quite R&B because it has that delayed kick. Um, it's It's got that delayed beat drop and uh, the rhythm, it is, it's, it's, I heard it called like a kind of alternative R&B or New Age R&B. Um, it definitely has that flavor, which is not the kind of music I would have ever expected Yona to make. I must admit, when I first heard it and it dropped like that, I was a little disappointed because it's not necessarily my taste. Um, I think that the song sort of meanders a little bit. Uh, and in terms of the melody and the construction of it, I just don't think it's quite as memorable. So this song, not to mention it's quite long, it's about six minutes. Um, does feel like it overstays its welcome possibly a little bit. And I had, if I had to pick one song that I just, I'm really not feeling that much, unfortunately it would be this song. It's kind of a skip for me. I hate saying it. The chorus is a little bit more something, but it doesn't really feel like quite a payoff. Um, they're just sort of elevating their voices together and they harmonize nicely, but uh, I'm not exactly feeling any sort of energy. Sad noise. So are you going to follow me on? You're no good use promising me gold and grace. Living ain't easy. This worn out body covered in salt. Found broken and lost at sea. You can have the rest of me. The chorus. Breathe the last of this air to come to life. 
soak these hills like I'm the only one left alive. My salty drops roll frozen to the ground. Now I'm crystal in the mouth of your river. So again, delivering on the poetics. It's just sonically not quite hitting home for me. This song also uh, came across as feeling a little bit more about a relationship. Um, so it's a little less broad in terms of talking about all of us. And it's a little bit more like, you know, a traditional pop song where someone's talking about some person in particular, and they're trying to process that kind of Taylor Swift-like. I feel like this is sort of Yona's way of doing that. And she has done that in certain songs. She especially does that on Everyone Afraid. And um, when I interpret these lyrics, I don't necessarily take them to heart as much because I feel like it's more Yona getting out something personal that she needs to hash out with someone in particular. Okay, so another, uh, the shortest track on this record is called Race Against. Um, and it's almost a completely ambient um, vocal free track, except that she does mutter race against in a very sort of distorted and off key, eerie manner um, in sort of some of the song in its, uh, in its murkier elements. Um, I think this song is an exquisite, experimentation of sound and of electronics uh and although it's not quite as accessible as islander um it complements islander kind of nicely uh and uh, i can't help but think of time when i hear this song race against time um i would feel like that would be the last word that's missing but she's leaving it out to sort of add emphasis um because this song does kind of it does kind of feel like an escalation of something and there's a quick, there's a hurriedness to this track that kind of gets your anxiety going a little bit. Um, it's, 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 again, like I said, it's one of the darker elements of this album, which like somebody has in its production mixing. Um, this song sort of embodies that sort of, that minor tone, that, that like underside that's a little bit darker and uh, more insecure and confused. And in, yeah, it, it feels like that. So the next track is called Silence My Drum. I think sonically it's a bit middle of the road for me. Again, it's, uh, it's not hugely standing out to me. I can't really remember the melody, um, even though it feels like it wants to pay off. It doesn't quite. Um, but if you listen to the lyrics of this track, Yona talks about having several health scares throughout the creation of Everyone Afraid to be Forgotten, and even since then, where she's really considered stopping doing this altogether. Um, she's been very sort of confused about whether, you know, like, you know, we all take criticism to heart. Like we just, we don't, we're all our own worst critics. So she's like completely unsure of whether she wants to keep going, if this is worth it. And uh, this song is sort of describing that inner anxiety, her fears, trying to silence her voice. Woke up from silent sleep, faint and half. I ran at light speed to break through the wall. My sound is ceasing. I chase the calls into mute frequency to face the force. Silence my drum and hush my calls. My sound will travel until it stops. I fire my guns, burn through it all. Will shy from no man. Will kill the calm. So the silence is not going to survive. You know, I will. I will speak. I will fight this uh, insecurity. Um, and my voice will be like a gun firing into the crevices of my brain that don't, uh, that don't believe in me, because I will fight fear and insecurity tooth and nail um, with my music, with my lyrics, with my, with my voice. Um, and so I really appreciate the uh, gravitas of this song because of the lyrical emphasis on overcoming anxiety and um, doubt and setbacks, you know, if it's like a vocal problem, for instance, um, overcoming that and making art about it to show that you had the last laugh. Uh, you ended up breaking through the silence um, and creating new music for us, which is wonderful. And you can't silence her drum. You just, you can't shut her up. And that's great because we don't want that to happen. It would be so sad if this album wasn't made or if she stopped making music. I really hope she continues. The next track has uh, is called Mysteries of Love. This is one of my favorite songs on the record. It is a collaboration between her and this group called Royskop. They're a Swedish group um, who make very kind of poppy, but also alternative synth music. Um, and uh, they, they only kind of come in actually kind of later into the song when they add a little bit of a backing synth work instrumentation most of this song is very ambient and spaced out. 
This is apparently a cover of a uh, another song because when I heard the melody, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a rich melody. The way it turns the notes, like did, did Yona really come up with this? The, the song originally is by an artist named Julie Cruz. Um, and uh, I'm not sure when the song came out. 1986, it looks like. It was written and recorded for David Lynch's 1986 film, Blue Velvet, and was made commercially available on Cruz's 1989 debut album, Floating Into the Night. Now, lyrically, it's not a Yona song because it's so obviously about love. Like she's almost writing... If this were her lyrics, it would just be so unlike her in a way. So it makes sense that this is a cover. When I heard that, I was like, that makes sense. But I must admit, I mean, I was really impressed for a second there at this melody. I was like, Yona, where has this melody been hiding on this record? Like, this is what I'm talking about. You are completely engulfing me in your voice and in the mystery and ethereal nature and your delivery of it. Um, I haven't heard the original. I don't know if it sounds completely different. I'd be curious to know in the comments, what does it sound like? I'll probably listen to it at some point, but I couldn't before this review. You know, the way she, I, I, it's almost like a Lana Del Rey melody um, in that it's very bluesy and it's very, uh, very cinematic and old school feeling. And um, it is so uh, desperately romantic. And I love that. Um, it's hopelessly romantic, you know, uh, and it fits this album because it feels like a song from the 60s in a way where it's just like this, you know, we're looking at the moon landing and we're like, oh, everything's going to be gorgeous and beautiful and the space age and, and endless love and love and hippies and the hippie movement. It feels like it's channeling that. So it's a bit of a retro throwback. And I like that it's included in this record. And I actually would have loved for it to close out the album because it lands on such an ethereal planet way up there. And I won't, I don't want to come down. And we close the album with the song I Keep. And I have to be honest, I Keep is just, it feels kind of sonically like it's dragging a little bit. Um, and Yona has often ended her albums on real highlights. Um, making a real statement. And I'm not saying, again, lyrically, she makes a great statement. I think that th this uh, song, when you look at the lyrics, are about, you know, uh, self-esteem and self-preservation in the face of doubt and fear. And they kind of do tie everything back to her in a nice way. But just sonically, it's a lot like Crystal. It's it's missing something for me in terms of, uh, you know, it's it's not actually that experimental. You know, and that's the problem. If it's going to sound kind of, I don't like the word, um, it's not generic. What's the right word? Aimless. If it's going to sound a little aimless, then at least have really avant-garde stuff going on to like really, to make it feel like you don't know what's about to happen. But this song plays it a little safe in that regard and that it feels kind of predictable. And once you've heard it, you know, you know how it's going to loop and you're just sort of like, I don't really feel like I need to hear the rest. Again, that's my own personal taste. I... You know, I love Yona, but I'm not going to like every single thing she makes. It's the same with almost every single artist that I love. They have at least one song that I'm not crazy about. Um, and I still, I really respect it. I really think it's a great way to, again, ca encapsulate this sort of message of hope and positivity in dark times. Keep forgetting to remember myself. Keep forgetting to embrace myself. I keep letting you in on my shell. I keep stepping in my own traps. I need to stop doing this. Someone told me that talk is cheap. I open my mouth to wash it clean. This call to remember who you are. Remember the future, but remember that you are the future. And so it's about what you choose to do and, and the paths you take and the way you react to the world around you uh, that shapes your reality. And um, it's a great message to end on. But again, I just wish sonically it doesn't feel like it's it doesn't feel like a moment. And I feel like this album could have really ended on like a real esoteric moment. Uh, and for me, this song feels like it's a little too weighed down. Like we're being pulled back down from mystery as of love. We're bringing the gravity back. But hey, maybe that's a good way to end it because it does kind of remind us of the gravity of life. So maybe we couldn't end quite so esoteric. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, again, I'm trying to make it as insightful as possible. I could, like I said, talk about this album for hours. Um, but I really want to make sure that uh, I try and be concise and not too rambly. Ultimately, I think that this is an album I will come back to, uh, and it'll be an album I come back to in spurts. It's not something I'm going to listen to a whole lot 
for a long period of time. It'll be something I come back to every once in a while um, to just sort of remember and uh, remember myself, remember the future, and uh, to sort of uh, get that hopeful feeling because it is inspiring. I'm always inspired by artists who make avant-garde, boundary-pushing work that is so much deeper than the surface, that is so much more than just trying to sell a commercial product, that's so much more than even just about love and sex and relationships, but it's about a deeper understanding of all of that. Um, that's like a therapy session that's just like completely out, uh, that's mystical, that's opening portals, that's spiritual, that's sacred. She is tying all of this together. But it is, it's a subtler, more understated body of work. Um, and it doesn't feel quite as flashy. It doesn't feel like it needs to advertise itself. It feels like it just wants to do its own thing. And if you're on board, great. Um, uh, but it doesn't really care. <laughs> um, so I like that, again, she wasn't really trying that hard. I like that when she's just sort of let loose to create and she doesn't have monetary restrictions, she can just explore a lot of things that she might have not been able to explore. And, um, and she still ties it up in a nice, uh, in a nice cohesive bow. Because this album is cohesive. It flows nicely. Um, there's moments where things pick up and then they come back down. And it's a very good album for late at night. It's a very good album for the bath. It's a very good album for those contemplative sort of uh, elements. Not such a great workout record. Though Somebody is a great song for that, for sure. Um, but otherwise, there's not really a much of that up-tempo. Um, but that's, that's all good. That's all good. So let me know what you thought of this record. Uh, I still think Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten just stands out as more memorable to me because it feels like it has that it factor. And there are just so many songs that I'm going to always come back to as just being like so amazingly uh, resonant and so like uh, well-produced and like amazing um, beats and danceable and just like it's got all these fun things going on. Um, but this record is sort of it, it needs to um, needs to be celebrated for what it is, which is a completely different thing from Everyone Afraid to Be Forgotten, but a, still a part of Yona. And, um, and I think Yona fans will still very much receive it with open arms. I've heard, you know, glowing things uh, from reviewers. So um, well done, Yona. You know, you always surprise and you always uh, create the unexpected. So I, I really look forward to seeing where you go from here, though I think it'll be quite some time before she releases any more new music. Um, but I'd be curious to see what the launching pad is from, the, from here. Um, and thank you all so much for watching this review. And uh, please give a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Peace, love, and light. Remember the future. Remember the dream. Bye.